We're considering Pascal's triangle and combinations, which leads on to what's called Pascal's rule. Now, if you've never seen Pascal's triangle, this is its form. So, in fact, it's in it's of infinite size, so it can keep going beyond that. And you can see it starts with a one there, and it's got a one and a one there. It forms a little triangular shape with those first three. In fact, as it builds, it continues to form a triangular shape. And as I said, it continues on forever. You might notice after a while, there are a number of patterns. Okay, so there's ones on the end. What about the other numbers? Well, if we can accept that the first two rows here have ones in them, we get subsequent values by adding what's above. So if we look at this 3 here, it is achieved by going 2 plus 1. And as I said, it starts and ends with 1s. So this 10 is attained by 6 plus 4. Now it's a few things about it. The first row is often referred to as row 0 or n equals 0. Not, it's, it doesn't start at row 1. It starts at row 0 or we could say that's n equals 0 and it continues on and end. It doesn't end. It, n is infinite. Alright, so it goes up to infinity. So what we find if we look at the values in there is that 0c0, which as we know from our previous work is equal to 1, can be written there. So written, writing it in NCR form, we can see that there is a pattern emerging. So 1 is 1z0. One can also be written as 1c1. 2z, 2c0. 2c1, 2 corresponds with these values here, and so on. If, if you pause and take a look, it works. So the NCR somehow works in with the Pascal's triangle. So you may want to pause the video to see if you can guess how it works. Did you notice that the first number refers to the n, in other words, refers to the row number, which is kind of obvious because it's written there. And the r is the position in that row. Again, it doesn't start at 1, it starts at 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, and so on. We've actually seen Pascal's rule if you've been around when this was proven. This is Pascal's rule, and basically it, can, it is provable, and we've got to remember that R can go down to 1, and it can go up to but not including N. Remember, R is limited to 1 because we have r minus 1 there. We can also see the link between it and Pascal's triangle. So let's choose an NCR to show this. This is not the proof of course, the proof has been done elsewhere. But basically let's look at any particular value. Let's say this, this NCR value here. So We know that we get this value here, if we look at the actual value 6, by adding this and this. And we see that there. Now that, that is, if that's NCR, that here would be N minus 1. And that is going 0, 1, so it's a 1 there, which is 2 minus 1. We also see that the other number that is used is that one there, and it's got the same R value, 
as ncr, but its n value is n minus 1. So while that's not a proof, it shows how it relates. Let's now look at a simple application of this, and um, we've got given that 17c2 is 136, 17c3 is 680, evaluate this. So this would be a, uh, could well be a non-calculator question. So non-calculator or tech-free. And and so we've got not to use our calculator for this, but we've got to use Pascal's rule. And so 18C3 can be attained if we know Pascal's rule. Because if we look at, do we have an N minus R C, uh, sorry, N minus R C R minus, let me try again, N minus 1 C R minus 1. And we do, don't we? Because if N is 18 and R is 3, 17 C2 fits that. So it would be 17C2 minus, or plus I should say, 17C3, because that's N minus 1CR, which we have values for, and that's 136 plus 680. Very easy, and 816 is our answer there. Another simple application, so we need to write down n equals 6 for Pascal's triangle and then write down the value of 6c3. Okay, well, we've got, um, from what we saw above here, Pascal's triangle down to the, let's say, fifth row or n equals 5, and so we just simply put in the values for the next row. And we know that 6C3 means row 6, third position. Remember, this starts at 0th position, 1st, 2nd, 3rd. So 16C3 is 20. So the answer is 20. Now, sure, you could use a calculator or work that out um, with NCR, but that's also pretty quick. Okay, suppose we've got a friend and the friend says to you, I have five books I no longer need, take any that you want. And you've got to work out how many different selections are possible. We can use Pascal's rule for this. Now you're thinking, I could choose um, zero books out of five, or out of five I could choose zero at a time, which is 5C0, and it, then it moves up to 5C1. I could choose two from five, or from five I could choose two at a time, another way of saying. So these are all NCRs, they're selections, aren't they? Um, and we can take that up to its highest value there. I think I've got all of those there. And that equals 32. But, 2 to the 5 also equals 32. Coincidence. Let's pause and think about that. In fact, it's not a coincidence because if we back that up a bit, for every selection, we can pause or reject, we can, sorry, accept or reject that book. So we, we do that five times. There's two choices for it per each book book, accept or reject, Set, accept or reject, so that's two times itself done five times, two to the fifth, and yes, that's 32. So the number of options there is 32, which is the same as the number of selections, same thing. This brings us to another important conclusion. The sum of the entries in row n of Pascal's triangle is 2 to the n. Or it's basically that there. 
And another interpretation of that is a size, sorry, a set of size n has two to the n subsets. But that note, please, that that does include the empty set and the entire set itself. Okay, so we're not talking about proper subsets. We're just talking about regular subsets and the empty set. So the empty set set has nothing in it. So very important. So we've got a little example here. Your friend, very much like what we saw before, but there is one twist to it. Your friend offers you any of six books. You know, take what you want. The friend will say, how many selections are possible? Assuming, we've got a constraint here, assuming you take at least one book. What that does is mean that there's no empty set. So no empty set. All right, so if it did include the empty set, remember we, we would have two by two by two by two by two by two, in other words, two to the six, but no empty set is reducing one of those options down. So it's two to the six, take one, 64, take one is 63. Lastly, we have an interesting one here. We've got how many subsets of one to three to 10 integers have at least two elements. So if we didn't have this stipulation, we would have two to the n, which would be two to the 10, but we have at least two. So that means we need to get rid of subsets that have one element. So that's an NCR, isn't it? So from 10, choosing one at a time. So that's out. And then likewise, the empty set is out as well, choosing zero at a time. Now just, um, while you calculate these, so 10 C1 is 10. Just remember too, you do have the option of going back to this here. And remember that um, on the top, the the 10 factorial is just 10 times 9 factorial. So you've got multiple ways, be mentally agile, you've got multiple ways of thinking this through. And of course that just comes down to 10, doesn't it? And that's uh, one way of getting that 10. Uh, you don't have to draw, you know, row 10 of Pascal's triangle and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and likewise this one here, so, and that's clearly just one there, one there, and zero factorial is one. And we have that. And we then have a thousand and thirteen. So So we've got multiple ways of doing this. Um, yep, yeah, so there's